This, Justin, you are looking at a, obviously a very disturbing live shot there. That is the World Trade Center, and we have unconfirmed reports this morning that a plane has crashed into one of the towers of the World Trade Center. As we're sure you already know, some interesting theories exist around what happened on September 11th, 2001. So here are the five most common conspiracy theories debunked, hopefully forever. Number one, jet fuel can't melt steel beams. It's a freaking noodle. Your argument is invalid. Get over it. Find a job. This is the most common conspiracy theory. So much so that it's essentially become a meme these days. And like a lot of memes, it's nonsense. No, jet fuel cannot melt steel beams. Jet fuel burns up to 1500 degrees Fahrenheit, while steel melts at around 2500 degrees. However, steel does begin to lose strength at around 600 degrees Fahrenheit. And with the weight above the impact point on the North Tower similar to that of the Titanic, the weakened steel simply could not hold and the tower collapsed. Number two, controlled explosions. When the towers collapsed, many commented that the destruction looked similar to that of a controlled demolition. This added fuel to many conspiracy theories. However, modeling has proven this inaccurate. Research by Purdue University and Dr. Frank Greening showed that with the way the fuel spread on impact and with the weight transfer from the building above the impact site, the building would indeed fall almost entirely vertically. Number three, the World Trade Center 7 collapse was an inside job. Alongside the North and South Tower, WTC 7 was also destroyed on 9-11. It took around seven hours for the building to collapse. However, the National Institute of Standards and Technology has supported the theory that WTC-7 was more damaged by falling debris than previously estimated. WTC-7 may have withstood the debris or the fire, but both factors, combined with the unusual design, brought down the building. Number four, the Pentagon was hit by a missile. Despite dozens of witnesses who watched a plane fly into the side of the Pentagon, many conspiracy theorists believe it was instead a missile that caused the damage. When the plane hit the Pentagon's exterior wall, it created a hole approximately 75 feet wide. So why wasn't the hole 125 feet wide the same as the plane's wingspan? The answer is actually pretty simple. One wing hit the ground on approach, and the second was sheared off by the force of the impact, leaving just the fuselage to cause damage. Number five. Flight United 93 was shot down. I'm on a plane that's been hijacked. I'm on the plane. I'm calling from the plane. I want to tell you I love you. Please tell my children that I love them very much. And I'm so sorry, babe. Um, I don't know what to say. I hope to be able to see your face again, baby. I love you. The fourth and final plane to be hijacked was believed to be targeting Washington, D.C. Instead, it crashed into a field in Pennsylvania. After the plane was hijacked, the crew and passengers staged a revolt, either forcing the plane into the ground themselves or forcing the hijackers to do so. But some believe the flight was instead shot down by the US military. This conspiracy theory is actually born out of some truth. The order was apparently given by Vice President Dick Cheney for the plane to be shot down. However, the scrambled jets never made it in time. And we know the plane wasn't shot down because the scrambled jets weren't armed and instead actually planned to ram the plane but before they got the chance to do so, the passengers took matters into their own hands. I think an act of heroism just took place on that plane, Shaney said. There are many, many more 9-11 conspiracy theories out there, all of which are completely ridiculous and easily disproved. But after 20 years, it's unlikely that some people will ever accept the truth.